Hi, and welcome to another episode of Fully Charged. And as you can see, this is quite spooky. This is what a car sees when it's driving towards you. But it's very gentle, and it will stop. This is Traffic Jam Assist. Was that you breaking? No, that was the system. That was the system breaking? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. What traffic jam assist is basically, uh, in traffic jam situations, from zero uh, miles per hour to 35 miles per hour, in very dense situations, we're able to relieve some of the stress from the driver. Right. And what the vehicle is able to do, utilizing a mono camera and a radar system, right. is we fuse the data together and be able to control the longitudinal, which is uh, acceleration and deceleration right. braking, as well as the lateral control, which is the steering. Yeah. And in traffic jam situations, that tends to relieve some of the stress from the driver. Yeah. And what we'll get to experience that is as we come down uh, Riviera and Las Vegas Boulevard, for example, we'll get to experience that as well. Right. And from here, from the HMI perspective, what we see is, are you familiar with adaptive cruise control? Yes, yeah. Perfect. So this is going to show the vehicle's current speed, which you know is zero. Right. Our set speed is 35 miles per hour. Right. Fuel remaining is just like on a smartphone, how much battery you have left, but yeah. in this case, the fuel. And our distance to target is the target itself is the rabid vehicle. So, so how far away we remain, remain from that vehicle. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So this HMI here demonstrates the target vehicle itself. And so qu quickly say what an HMI is. Oh, that's, that's, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's... Oh, there's someone... <laughs> It was a unique yeah. traffic situation there. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and so HMI is basically a human machine interface. interface thank right? you. It's Just basically that. how the driver interacts with the vehicle itself. Right. And in the situation, as you can see right now, my hands are completely off. Oh gosh. <laughs> in fact, I'm not even driving or I'm not even. So your feet aren't on the pedals or anything. Exactly. Right. So when it's green like this, this means basically that I means can take my hands off. Right. The I see. And when it's red, or there will be a notification to me that I need to put my hands right. back on. Yeah. Now, the one thing about the tipple function that I was telling you about is, in the absence of lane, where the plow plots a tra trajectory, the one issue might be potentially is that trajectory could take you into an adjacent lane. Right. That's why it's always uh, beneficial for the driver to be always on notification or on standby. Yeah. The driver's responsible. Yes. When we get to the points of highly automated driving, that is when the driver is basically out of the loop at that right, point. Right, right. But as we're cur currently in the loop, these are partially automated systems, the driver needs to be conscientious yeah. of what's going on. Right. It is a hard thing to describe to someone who's not been in a car like this. It does feel <laughs> odd to it does. Th the very first time. You know, and I think if I was in your position, I'd be extremely, <laughs> I'm sure you're used to it now, but I would be very nervous. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And uh, as we go down Las Vegas Boulevard, there are uh, uh, some of the lane markings that are not as prevalent or right. noticeable. Yeah. And that's when that tipple function really comes into right. effect, and you'll really notice it. And it's uh, a little, uh, uh, a little scary at first. Right. But you know, you put faith in the technology, and we uh, do really good technology. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. absolutely. There's kids on bikes here. You know that you wouldn't. I wouldn't even think twice. You'd be aware of it, but right. you suddenly realize the technology has to be aware of all these things, or potentially aware of all these things. And it's absolutely. And that's it's, why there's I, so many possible potential hazards that that could crop up. Absolutely. That's why you'll notice here when we didn't have lane markings, it, when it I was then, talking it, about the trajectory, yeah. it was plotting a course based on where that adjacent vehicle right. was with whatnot. So that's why when you don't have lane markings, it's, it's especially critical to be really aware of the situation. Yes, yeah. And that's why you'll notice that sometimes I'll put my hands closer to the wheel right. yes. in a situation like this where <laughs> you but have it, But currently, like the acceleration now, that's not you. That's the, that's the vehicle's doing all that. Wow. So I'm going to re-engage the system. Right. So the system's white, but now it's right. green. Now we it's registered where it is. Wow. And I'm taking my hands off yeah. at this point. And so, you know, earlier on where you're also uh, emphasizing the point of stepwise approach, that's also important when you introduce technology to, you know, to the market itself. Yeah. Because you don't want to introduce a highly automated vehicle right off the bat yes. to consumers. Because consumers, you know, generally tend to be a little more cautious. Yeah. And our approach with the stepwise approach is you introduce new technology over time. Yeah. And get yeah. people more accustomed to yeah. it. Other than rather than shocking them right away. I've been doing driver's assistance for a few years now and I have to tell you, Robert, when uh, I uh, show people automatic emergency braking, 
that's a very uh, eye-opening experience right. for a lot of people. Because yeah. everything in your mind as you're driving toward a target is yeah. break, break, Yes, break. for goodness <laughs> sake. <Yeah. laughs> but then you rely upon the system to yeah. uh, detect the target and apply the braking. Right. You know, this kind of driving, which everyone who drives is very used to, right. you know, low-speed driving in dense urban situations. Yeah. You know, the one thing it definitely is for everyone is boring and tedious. Yes, absolutely. You know, when people talk about, but I really enjoy driving, they never envisage this aspect of driving. They're right. envisaging the big, wide open road and the wide, you know, and the wonderful view. Absolutely. You don't think, oh yeah, I love driving in a traffic jam in a city. No, right. and, th and if that takes that away from you, you know, you. And, and for Bosch ourselves, we see uh, many benefits as we go toward highly automated driving. Right. Uh, for example, uh, obviously, you know. Uh, when you have injury-free, accident-free driving, yes. Bosch's primary emphasis is that type of. That's our it's, vision. It's, yeah, yeah. Injury-free, accident-free driving. Yeah. In addition to that, there's other benefits such as enabling different demographics to be able to drive, such as seniors, or yes. older people. Yeah. You know, if you something have, I'm becoming increasingly interested in. Absolutely. As the years pass. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> <laughs> but as uh, people get older and maybe their vision diminishes or yeah. whatnot, as you go toward a society with more highly automated vehicles, it enables them to be able to move as well. Yeah, yeah. And there's nothing that can describe the experience of sitting next to a driver who's not holding the steering wheel and yet the car is maneuvering down the road. It is extraordinary. So I'm f fascinated really by the technology that makes it work, which this screen really helped me understand a bit of it. So no, absolutely. That's, that's effectively what the car is seeing, what we're seeing. That's, yeah, what we're doing here is we're simulating what the forward-looking camera would actually see. Right. So as we are objects in front of the vehicle, the forward-looking camera, in this case, this is a stereo video camera. Right. So this one is actually able to do depth and disparity. Right. So in speed, and it'll pick up all of those. And that's what you see, those funny numbers yeah. that are on the screen right now. It's traffic jam assist, so right. it's a partially automated function. Yeah. So in those cases where it does, it's not able to read the actual lane markings, it will indicate to the driver, please right. take control again. Right. So you're definitely taking a, a, a step by step approach to, to taking the control of the vehicle away from the driver. I mean, it's not, absolutely. You know, it, um, from the Bosch perspective, we truly believe that automated driving is coming. Right. So when we get to this world of highly automated driving, first we will take steps. Yeah. And we will take smaller steps, and as we get more and more closer to this, we take this, as we call it, this journey towards automated driving, yeah. we'll be able to actually have a fully automated vehicle right. in the market. Right. Right. Various statistics are out there yeah. that anywhere between you've seen 80 to 90 percent of driver error are causes for most of accidents right. collisions. Yeah. Yeah. So in the United States, there's approximately 33,000 fatalities annually. That's a lot, isn't it? And we believe with this technology, we can address a lot of those fatalities, but as you mentioned, yeah. not only as well as injuries. Yeah. That really helps. <laughs>